no, you can uh, take notes from my dog. He can completely drown me out now at this point, right? Like this is probably his, I don't know, maybe like 20 or 30th Zoom class. So he is very skilled at sleeping through them at this point. Uh, so today, guys, we were talking about it in the funnies class earlier. My wife works uh, a weekend out of the month at her hospital, so she won't be able to train with us today. So the main way that that will change for us is that when you are watching her demo, uh, that, that won't be going on, obviously. So please holler at me, lift your hand, let me know if you have a question or not, just in case we get lost so I can keep everybody on the same page, all right? We're gonna run through the flow that everybody knows, our uh, leg drag pass, our high step, side control maintenance to the other side, and let's get to the mount and we'll finish, okay? And then from there, we'll get into our truck attacks. First, a little warm up. Let's bow in. Thank you guys for training, and we'll bow in. Let's hit the floor. Perfect. Remember, nothing too fast. We're just trying to loosen up. Nice and easy pace. 30 seconds of break falls. And work time. I'm really just trying to roll my back out. Put that spine weight up a bit. Perfect. And let's switch to triangles. Hips to the sky. Triangles. Remember to change the lock on each rep. Let's try to get to our feet. And let's pick up those hips. Nobody gets triangled if your hips are on the floor. That's why we say we shoot our triangles. Go attack. And last rep, guys, let's bring those feet over our head. Let's get a little stretch. Nothing crazy. Uh, but my back is a little tight. We can support our hips with our hands. Just a little stretch on that back. All right, so we'll switch to Kimuras. Rolling over our shoulders onto our elbows. Trap that wristwatch. Kimuras, 30 seconds here. Perfect. Nice, and we'll come up into our tabletop. Let's run a few sit outs. Remember, it doesn't have to be fast. But I uh, definitely want to start getting a little sweat going before we get into technique. Hands on the floor. We're up on our toes. And from here, when I pick up my right hand, my left foot will shoot the gap between my toes. Slide it out. My left hip is, uh, it can hit the floor, or I can say elevated, kind of up to you. I'm going to look up at the ceiling. My right hand is going to go elbow to hip. And I'll come back in by rewinding the position. And now we'll run it on the other side. Lift the left hand, right foot slides through, looking up in the sky, left elbow to hip. Back and forth, work time. Remember, it doesn't have to be fast. Make sure you don't hit your partner. Ten more seconds. Good work. All right, my friends. Now, just like the fundamentals class earlier today, I'm going to add in a little footwork for our standing, for our takedown game. Now, if you have a partner, you'll be able to go one for one. If you don't have a partner, there we go. 
then you're going to be going uh, just the whole time. You'll be fine. I promise. It won't be that bad. Now, I'm a little too tall for my setup. So you watch my feet. You don't need my head. We're going to work our double leg. Now, in our double leg, we talked about this in Bundy's. I think this is a really important thing to remember. Typically, when you're striking, like when I'm punching or kicking, I, I like my strong hand, my dominant hand, to be my back leg, right? So if I was going to be at Whole Foods or an MMA fight, like my right hand behind me, so I'm gonna be able to turn and punch into my right fist, right? That power too. In grappling, I kind of like my strong leg in front because I'm gonna use it so often to come forward, right? It's gonna be that big foot in the dirt, push off. So while you might be used, like if you've been doing kickboxing or Muay Thai, to where you've been putting your strong side in the back of the stance, for today, we're gonna to move our strong side to the front of the stance. So if your right hand is gonna bring your right foot in front, and now we're just gonna run doubles. I want to talk about the half step, something that I think is uh, can get us in a lot of trouble. So don't tell anybody I taught it to you, but something that I think is really, really important in terms of covering the distance. When we double leg, remember, we're going to take that penetration step, and that's going to lower our level. And as I lower my level, my lead leg, me, will shoot to the floor. Not my back leg, because my back leg is going to step up, putting us in that big lunge. From the lunge, we're gonna squat, and now run like a big right angle, right? Now, a pro tip, something that can help me cover the gap. The biggest thing that we run into when we first started double legs, the person over here feels like a million miles away, right? I go to shoot, and they're still so far. I wanna take a half step with my back leg first. It will change the entire world for you, I promise. Okay, so everybody up. Perfect. My right leg is gonna be in front. My knees are bent. My hands are open. My elbows are closed. We're gonna take a half step with our left leg first before we take the penetration step. My left leg, it's never gonna come square and it's never gonna get in the same line as my right foot. And I don't wanna walk a tightrope. I'm gonna keep both feet under my shoulders, but I'm gonna take a half step forward with my left foot, where my big toe is just behind my right heel. Now, for sure, you're a little off balance here. This isn't somewhere you feel very strong, but notice how bringing this left leg close lets you take that big step with that right leg and not feel like you're gonna fall over. Now that right knee is gonna to drop to the floor, and that left leg is going to step up. Perfect. Now, we're going to connect our hands. And I'm going to step up into the squat. Now, how I know which way to run is whatever leg stepped up. So when you step up that right leg, you run to the right. Perfect. I kind of think about it like uh, I would come forward on the double leg. And then it's a hard turn, right? Like we're gonna make right angles on the mat. So everybody, right leg forward for me, let's run it again. Perfect. My left foot's gonna take a half step. My right leg's gonna take a big lunge step, right knee to the floor. Step up that left leg, flap the hands. Step up your right foot in a squat. Nice straight back, shuffle to the right. Nice. All right, here we go. Anybody got questions? We feel good here? Thumbs up, you feel good? All right, if you got a partner, you're going to go one for one. You don't have to finish the takedown. Don't break your coffee table. If you don't have a partner, just run them. Rep, 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 rep. You're here for 90 seconds, my friends. Ready? On three, one, two. Get to work, double legs. Half step with that back leg. Then my lead leg will take the big lunge step. I'll clap my hands, 
Stand up in my squat. There you go, Coach Matty. Double leg that bag, bro. Now we're using that bag for what it was meant for, homie. <laughs> nice work, my friends. Remember, this doesn't have to be fast at all. This is just grooving in the mechanics. Yes. Double leg the dog, Thomas. They love it, bro. Yeah, go get him. <laughs> he wants it. Nice work, my friends. If you have a partner, make sure we're going one for one. If you have a partner, I recommend trying to grab both of their calf muscles, right? Like I was going to reach around their legs and try to tie their shoelaces together. I would need to be way down around their calves to reach the shoelace, right? So bring those hands lower, lower at the knee line. Notice how much easier it is to tip them over when you stand up in the squat. Very nice, Emily. Yes, and now you push the head to the right. Thomas will go straight to the floor. Hey! Very nice. Remember, my friends, let's watch our pace. I don't want to hold my breath here. Just like jiu-jitsu on the floor, I got to breathe through every step. Nice, Nikki. Super smooth. Professor. Shuffle steps bringing you close. What's up, Ben? Do you have a favorite way of clearing the hands before you go to the double leg or? Yeah, so personally, uh, whichever way is available. <laughs> so if I come on top of the hands, I like to go down and out. If I can get underneath the hands, I'll go straight to the ceiling. Uh, I also like from the collar tie entry, bicep control, snap down and then go underneath. Lots of different ways, man. It just, it's very situationally specific. Great question, Ben. Thank you. Nice pace. You got about 15 seconds. That's time for like, what, 20 doubles? Yeah, there we go, Quan. Very nice. You'll start to feel this smooth out, my friends. Right now, sometimes it can feel like your knee is a hard stop on the floor. Try not to go too heavy. Don't break your hardwood. Don't blow up a kneecap. The goal is for that knee to kind of skip off the ground like a rock, right? Which means you can't be super heavy on it. It's not meant to be a hard stop. It's a smooth transition. It's just getting us under their arms, under their hips, so we can stand up in that squat. Ugh, with their balance in our control. Very nice. Very nice. And time. Good work, my friends. Whew. Thank our partners. Catch our breath. Bring it back to the camera. Make sure you can see. Now, this is Saturday, which means I've seen most of you cats all this week. So I know you know this flow. I want to go over it a couple times. One time by myself, and then the next time we'll do it together. But I'm going to combine a couple things here, okay? So if this is your first class, please feel comfortable, I promise, with stopping on the first technique. It's more than enough. Everybody that's been seeing this, though, man, let, let's kind of run through this chain. I'd like to show the drag, the high step, side control to mount with the maintenance, and then I'd also like to show like a reset, and instead of the high step, we'll take the back. All right, so I know a lot of that doesn't make sense. We'll do it together. So first, remember, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, we're gonna run it together to the left first, which means our right hand will hit the hip, my left hand on the pants. I'm gonna shuffle to the left until I get perpendicular to my partner's hips, or maybe you think about it, you're both parallel now. It just all depends on perspective, I guess. What I'm going to do is take that left hand grip and punch it behind my right elbow. So I'm going to move this leg behind my right arm. As I do that, I'm going to shuffle to the right, using my legs to walk myself over until I can staple my stuffy buddy's bottom leg under my shin. The top leg, the one that's in your left hand, it's going to lay down right on top of your thigh. Now, rep number one, right? Here's where everybody can stay if you're new to this class. 
You're going to take your partner's hands, stuffy buddy's sleeves, and stuff them to the chest. With both hands on the chest, guys, I'm in the leg drag. I have one knee stapled. I have my other leg out straight, like knee on belly. I'm going to bring my left leg over the head. As I bring it over the head, it's like I'm going to water slide down my partner's leg. But before I go, I'm going to dig an underhook. So since my left leg stepped over, my left arm will underhook, my right arm will dig out the other sleeve, and I'll baseball slide my hip to the mat into modified case katami. From modified case katami, we'll bring our right elbow over, step over the head, north south. Now one more time with that right elbow over, back step, case katami. From case Katami, we'll go to side control into the mount. And in the mount, I'll finish. Remember, we went over a lot of submissions in this class and fundies from the mount. So any submission you want, chokes, arm bars, I'm not picky, dealer's choice, okay? From here, from your tap, if this is your first time in the class, run that whole chain again, okay? If this is, if you've been doing this for a minute, what's Hop up and run rep number two, which doesn't have the high step. And rep number two, right hand to the hip, shuffle to the left, punch that left grip across, shuffle to the right to the leg drag. And this time, guys, in rep number two, you're going to go right hand to a collar grip, right elbow to my thigh. See, I'm kind of curling my partner to me. Now my left hand is going to stay under the back, but instead of going to the collar, like we worked on with that chair sit back take, let's go back to the hips where we're focused on the last two weeks. My left hand is going to grab low on the hips. And with this low grip on the hip, I'm going to lean to the right and pick up with my left hand. Notice how that starts to show you something, buddy's patch. I'm almost turning him over to turtle. What that will give us is a gap between their elbow and their knee. In that gap, you're going to thread your left foot. Now remember, when you put in this left foot, if I stay back here, it feels like really uncomfortable and far away. If I thread the left foot while I lean forward, it's easy to put my left knee down. My bottom hook is already in. Notice how close I am to my partner's face or to the back of their head. Your left hand's gonna snake under the neck, sit down on this left side, and we're on the back. Once we're on the back, guys, oh, stuffy buddy's so flexible. We're gonna run our choke. You know the chokes. Collar grip with our left hand around the neck. Right hand lower on the lapel, cross grip. Extend both hands, pull the left elbow behind the neck, finish. Once I'm done with rep two, I'll hop up and I'll go back to rep number one. So if you've got a partner, you're going to go one for one. Hold on, let me see. How many screens have partners, guys? One, two, three. Ooh, quite a few today. Okay, so let's go like this. If you have a partner, senior student, you're going to go first. Junior student, you're going to be the key partner, the bottom player. You'll run the whole round, and then we'll, I'll switch you bottom to top. If you have a gi dummy, you're going to run the, the technique both rounds, okay? So everybody up, senior student first, follow me. Let's do it together. Perfect. Okay, so right hand on the hip, left hand on the pants grip. We're going to shuffle to the left. And now we're going to punch that left hand behind our right elbow as we shuffle back to the right. Drop your right knee down. Perfect. So you'll know it's right if you're on top of their bottom leg and their top leg is on top of your hip. So both of my partner's legs are on my right side. Perfect. The leg drag position. Now, we're going to take our stuffy buddy's hands and put them on his chest. Pin them with my hands, because now I'm going to take my left leg, I'm going to straighten it out, 
Really slow, guys. Don't kick your partner's face off. Bring it over the head and lay that left tip down on top of theirs. Now, if you got a stuffy buddy, you're probably going to squish on a little bit. That's okay. Take your time. We'll figure it out. Left hand's going to underhook. Right hand's going to go get a grip and pull up. We're going to water slide down to our left tip. Nice. Case Katami. Now, from Case Katami, guys, we're going to step that right leg over the head to north south. Nice. Bring that right elbow across the hip. Back step that left leg. Case Katami on the other side. Perfect. Now let's go to side control. Your left arm's the cross face. Pro tip, go four fingers in the armpit with that left hand. Pull that left elbow towards your hip. Notice how that drops your left shoulder on their face. A little shoulder adjustment. Now that right hand's gonna walk as my right shin cuts across the stomach. And I make it to the mount. Your turn, upper belt, whatever mount submission you want. Let's go. Show me a choke or an arm bar. Maybe you're fancy with some triangles. I don't care. From the finish, hop off. Legs towards your partner's legs. Stand back up, senior student. Let's take the back. There we go. Up, 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 up. Right hand on the hip. Left hand pants grip. We're going to run the same pass. Shuffle to the left. Punch that left hand behind your right arm. Shuffle to the right. Leg drag. My right knee staples. My partner's legs are on my right side, both of them. My right hand. So this is that technique we're going to expose the back with. My right hand is going to go collar grip. Same side collar that's on the same side of my right hand, right? Just a nice high grip up where their jawline would be. Left hand. It's going to go down here and grab at the hips. So not at the hip that I can see, right? Like not right here. I want to go down to that bottom hip. Way back here behind your low back. There we go. Now guys, I'm going to lean forward. But first, I need to pick up their hips. So we're going to lean to the right. Everybody lean to the right for me and lift that left hand. There we go. Notice how your stuffy buddy or your partner, their hips are starting to float. You see a gap right there underneath their hip where you picked up with that left hand. Your left foot is going to thread through that gap. You're going to lean forward and drop that left knee on the mat. Now with my left knee on the mat, my left hand can snake under the neck. I'm going to keep leaning forward and I'm going to fall to my left side. As you do that, that left hand's got to find the collar. Your right hand is already on the lapel from in the leg drag. Your right foot steps over. We're on the back. Let's extend our arms. Pull that left hand out of the neck. Finish. I'll hop up, and we'll go back to rep number one with the high step side control maintenance. Ooh, that was a big chunk. How do you guys feel? Thumbs up. We feel good? All right, now let's see. Who has questions? Anybody with some questions? We feel good? All right, so I'm going to talk my way through it, guys. Hi, one. Oh, we got Hi, some. One. What's up, Sorry. Mickey? Um, when you take the back, do you want to fall to your choking side or, or not choking side? Let's fall to our left arm that's under the neck, so what we would call the, the old school choking side. Good, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect, great question. Anybody else? All right, let's try it together. You guys ready? Let's clap it out on three. One, two. All right, so I'll be running the chain just out loud. If you get lost, hop in where I am. It's gonna be right hand on the hip, left hand pants grip, shuffle to the left. Now, when you shuffle back to the right, punch their leg behind your elbow, end up on that leg drag where your right knee is stapling one of their legs, their other leg is on your right hip, your left leg is straight, perfect. Now, we're going to go get both of their hands, pin them to their chest. Nice. Now, here comes your high step. You're going to start straightening that left leg. 
making sure we don't kick their nose off. We're going to bring it over the head. Now, once it's over the head, you're kind of in like a pigeon stretch, right? Your left hand's going to go dig an underhook. Nice. And now we're going to start sliding that left hip to the floor, down their thigh like a water slide. Yes. Once your left hip hits the mat, take your right hand and dig that frame out. Get their arm out of the way. We don't want to lay on it. We want it to be up in front of our belly button. Now from here, we'll go to north-south. Take that right elbow, bring it all the way across the body, and bring that right leg over the head. North-south. If you have a partner, make sure you let their arms get to their chest so we don't snap any limbs as we make our way to north-south. And then from north-south, bring that right elbow across the body one more time because we're going to backstep that left leg. Case Katami on the other side. Nice. From here, we'll go to side control. Perfect. And now we're going to get a cross face with our left hand. Really give them that shoulder of justice with that left arm, right? Left hand snakes under the neck, left shoulder to their chin. There we go. And now my right knee is going to start cutting across the stomach. As it does that, my, walk, my right hand will walk high to make sure they don't try to bridge and roll me off. Nice. Once I'm in the mount, dealer's choice, finish however you like, upper belt. Any submissions you feel comfortable drilling. Perfect. If you're doing it to a partner who's not used to training, better be nice so they come back tomorrow. Nice. And we're back up. It's time for rep two, senior student. Remember, guys, if you know the flow, keep going. You don't have to wait for me. Right hand on the hip. Left hand on the pants. And shuffle to the left. As you shuffle to the right, punch that pant under your right elbow. Get to the leg drag. Your right knee is stapling their bottom leg. Their top leg is on your right hip. Perfect. Now, your right hand is going to go get a collar grip right underneath their chin on the same side. So rather than a cross grip, the same side lapel that your right hand is on. Perfect. And now with that grip, your left hand is going to go down towards the hips and get a grip right where their hip meets the floor. So really low, like behind their low back. And as you lean to the right, you're gonna start picking up that left hip grip and you're gonna start floating their hip in the sky. Like we're gonna turtle them, right? Like you're gonna roll them over to put them into the turtle. As you do that, you wanna get that hip all the way off the floor because your left leg is gonna slide through threading the needle right in the hole that we create from picking their hip up off the mat. From there, my left knee will hit the floor, so I'm gonna lean forward. My left hand will snake under the neck. It will already be looking for a cross collar choking grip. I'll fall to my left side, put in my right hook. My right hand is an under hook with a cross grip lapel as well, and I'm gonna finish with the choke. Extending my hands, pull that left elbow behind the head, and finish. Hopping right back up. Run it again, run it again. It starts with rep one. So now it's the leg drag, pin the hands to their chest, high step. Perfect. Impressive. Don't kick off their face. What's up, Kurt? I need some help with the uh, water slide part. Yeah, perfect, <laughs> let's get there, buddy. So let's get to the leg drag. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. Okay, so we're going to pin their hands to their chest. And now that left leg is going to start straightening out. As it does, you're going to bring that heel over their face. Yeah, and then past their shoulder to where your heel's almost touching your right knee. So curl that leg. There we go. Now your left hand is going to shoot an underhook. Let's do the underhook on the same side as our left side. Yeah, there we go. Now your right hand is going to let go. And it's going to start pulling that sleeve grip that's right next to your right hand. Start pulling that to the ceiling. Nice. And now you're going to slide towards me down that thigh like you're at the water park. Yep, slide your hip to the floor like a baseball slide. Yes. And now we're going to pull, face them, face our underhook to modified case katami. So like scarf hold. There we go. Bring that right leg out of there. Perfect. And now we'll go to north-south. Yes. Perfect. 
And then from north south, we'll bring our right elbow over the hip and back step, case katami on the other side, puts us in side control, and now we can start attacking the mount. Good work, guys. Bottom to top. Bottom to top. So if you have a gi dummy, take a second, catch your breath. If you have a partner, switch for me. Bottom to top. Junior student, you're going to run through the rep with me, okay? If you're on the gi dummy and you're new to class, feel free to keep going. Hop in on the rep that we're working. Catch your breath. Doesn't matter. You're about to go another round anyway. All right? Junior student, let's go. Work it together. Right hand on the hip, junior student. Left hand, pants grip. And shuffle to the left. Punch that grip behind your right elbow. Shuffle back to the right. We end up in the leg drag. Very nice. Now, from here, I'm going to let go with my hands. I'm going to get my partner's hands and pin them to their chest. And now my left leg will straighten, and it will start high-stepping over the face. I'll curl that left heel to my right knee. Nice. Now my left hand will underhook. My right hand will dig out the hand that's on my right side. And I'm going to baseball slide my hip to the floor. Case Katami. Perfect. And now let's go north-south. Let's bring our right elbow over. Step over our partner's head with our right leg. North-south. Now let's bring our right elbow over the hip. And back step. Our left leg into modified case Katami on the other side. Very nice. Let's go side control. From side control, let's go to the mount. Nice. All right, you're in the mount, junior student. Any submission you feel comfortable with, you might go chokes with the cross collar. You might go get the arm bar. I don't care. Get a tap. From the tap, stand back up, junior student. Let's run rep number two. Nice, nice, nice. Here we go. Right hand on the hip. Left hand pants grip. Shuffle to the left. Punch that grip behind your right elbow. Shuffle to the right. All right, so this one's a little different. Remember, our right hand is going to go same side collar, nice and high on that collar grip, up by their chin. My left hand is going to go grab the hip grip. And guys, I'm going to turn my dummy this way so you can see. Just like in real life, in jiu-jitsu, I'm constantly trying to maximize back exposure. If I can see the logo on your back, I can choke you, right? So I want to constantly try to expose this logo. So we're going to get this grip really low on the hips, and I'm going to lean to the right. Notice how my left leg isn't straight anymore. It's posted right by the hips. So I can really lean and lift. I want to see that logo. I want to see a gap underneath your hip in the floor. There's where my foot's going to go. I'm going to thread the needle with my left foot, the top of my foot on the floor. My left knee will hit the mat as I lean forward, bringing my chest to my partner's back. My left hand is going to snake under the neck, under the chin, grab the collar, and fall to my left side. Now that I'm on my left side, I can put in my top hook. My right hand has been on the same lapel grip the whole time. It's going to allow me to go right into the choke, extend my arms, Pull my elbow behind the neck and bench. We'll hop up and we'll run rep number two. Or no, listen to me. Rep number one again. Junior students, any questions? You guys feel good? All right, get to work, junior students. Let's see it. Starts off with a leg drag. From the leg drag, we'll pin their hands to their chest. Nice. Here comes the high step. Make sure you don't kick their nose off. Yes. Curl that leg heel to knee. That way you can get an underhook and you can slide down to Case Katami. Really nice. From Case Katami, bring that right elbow over the head and let's step over the head with our right leg. North-south. 
Perfect. From north south, we'll back step the left leg into case Katami. Thomas, what's up, buddy? When you're back, so like you back step into like north south, right? And so you've got uh -huh. your knees above their shoulders, then you get like right elbow on that hip, right? Uh -huh. To block it from shrimping away. What like is there a way that as you like slide into case Katami from north south to make this limb like easier to get? So like you know, you're like here, and then this is here, and you back step. I feel like I end up laying on this arm more than digging under it. Right, right. So part of that is because we're doing it with a dummy. Uh, like a, a normal human will retract that arm really quick when we back step because they can feel that if they let us lay on that arm, then there's nothing stopping us attacking the collar right there. Does that make sense? It gets yeah. exposed. So they'll pull that hand in for safety. Uh, but the other thing you can do is I make sure that when I back step, my butt hits the floor on the, like the hip side of the arm. And then now I just keep scooting my butt back until my knees come to the armpit and then I can pull that arm out easier. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Great question, buddy. Keep going guys. You should be on rep two now, at least leg drag. And now let's take the back. We have that collar grip high in the lapel. We have that hip grip really low. We're gonna start leaning away from the hip grip. Stack them up. Show us the back. Thread in the hook. Nice. Finish. Good work. A lot of jiu-jitsu at you today, my friends. I know you're doing awesome though. Really long chain today. This is accumulation of a lot of work you put into your Zoom training. This is jujitsu, man. I, I promise that this is, works just as well with a partner. So when we come back to class, these reps, they absolutely count. If anything, they'll help you, right? Like uh, it kind of helps me to slow down a little bit, pay really tight attention to what, what each grip is doing, what each leg is doing slows down the chaos a little it's where i can get i can really hone in on what's important in the position nice and time good work my friends dang kwan's wrist locking people Woo! only our friends right kwan <laughs> Man, thank you guys so much. This that was fantastic. Uh, I know some of us. This is I know some of us our very first Zoom Jiu-Jitsu class. You are crushing it, my friends. Like you are doing amazing. Uh, that was at least twenty different positions on the floor, right? So give yourself some credit. You just did a lot of Jiu-Jitsu at once. Now, I would like to keep playing with some of the back attack stuff we've been working this week. We've been looking at the truck. Um, I would like to show kind of the counterpart to that position on the upper body, okay? So let's look at like, uh, it's basically the same idea as the truck, how we were isolating one of the legs to expose the back through the leg entanglements. Now we're gonna isolate the arm and expose the back through uh, entangling the upper body, something we call the crucifix. Uh, the crucifix is one of my favorite attacks in jiu-jitsu. It's so easy to find once we force someone to turtle. This is why, guys, uh, I'm, I know there's a lot of different ways to approach the game. I'm old school. I do not like the turtle as a position. I do not think that's somewhere that I can safely defend myself. I will go there, right, in training or the sports competitions because there's not really like a harsh consequence except that I'm giving up my back, right? It's like, cardinal sin in jiu-jitsu but man if i'm talking about mma self-defense or whole foods parking lots the turtle is a terrible place to go because you can't see anything anymore there's someone behind you that has easy access to the back of your head strikes to the back of the dome oh no oh you still guys still there sorry i got a phone call and my phone does it right to the computer right uh, anyway, the turtle is not somewhere that's safe regardless, but it's really dangerous when there's strikes, 
okay? So when I look for the leg drag and I'm trying to force you into the turtle, that's because I view the turtle as just like if I had your back. Okay, my friends? So let's look at it. Everything's gonna be the same. We're gonna go to rep number two. Man, stuffy buddies, kiss it up. Right hand on the hip, left hand hand strip, shuffle to the left, punch that grip behind my right elbow, leg drag. My right hand's gonna go collar grip, nice and high on the chin. My left hand's gonna go hip grip, nice and low on the hips. And I'm gonna lean to the right as I pick up the hips. Now what you'll see is your partner, they start to expose that gap, right? So like we talked about this week with truck, a lot of times this person will go ahead and post both hands out, but they'll go to a true turtle because they don't want to get tipped over. They don't want to give up this space. So they'll try to bring that elbow to their knee. And now with it all balled up here, there's not really room for me to get my foot in. Okay? So guys, we're going to take this grip, the one that we are looking to go uh, under the neck when we pick up the hips. Instead, it's going to go on top of the neck. All right? Now, with this hand on top of the neck, I'm going to be able to stand up. My partner looks kind of funny because he's a dummy. <laughs> but the idea here is that with me standing up in your turtle, I don't care what you try to do, right? Like, you can try to roll to the guard, but because I have this grip on your neck, your head can't hide to roll over into the guard, right? Instead, your head stays right where I pull up on it. I keep you in that turtle position. Now, we can't really do it with our gi dummy, but the thing I want everyone to know, this position should lead to the back every time. Because if you're balled up tight, not giving up hooks, and I have that right hand collar grip from the leg drag, that left hand grip on the back of the neck, I can always just snap you down to your side. And now with you on your side, I can step up into my chair sits. Does that make sense, guys? So what I would like to work here um, next week is looking at the chair sit itself. This is Saturday. Uh, at some of our schools, we used to do uh, the session on Saturdays. So it's a little spicier. <laughs> You're here on a Saturday morning. I want to show you something a little advanced, OK? Something with a little pop to it. So instead of breaking it down, we're going to put our right knee right up against our partner's imaginary hip. Perfect. See you later, Coach Matt. Thanks for training, buddy. Now, my right leg is going to slide like the baseball slide. See how I bring my knee underneath my partner's shoulder? Check out that exposed arm we create. With my thigh pulling their elbow out, I will now latch on to that leg, yeah, leg, to that arm that I've exposed. And I'll go both knees down. So it's like I'm going to pinch this arm right between my ankles, cross them in together. But I still have these same grips, right? I still have that cross grip with my right hand, left grip right on the collar. Now, on Monday and Wednesday, when we sat in the truck, we sat down and rolled backwards. Today, we're going to roll forwards, okay? So watch your partner, watch your space. See how in the turtle, their right hand is still posted or it's on its elbow right in front of us? We're going to bring our nose right to where their neck meets their shoulder. That's going to allow me to put my right shoulder on the floor, and I'm going to front roll, just like Bundy's class. But I'm going to pinch my knees together so I don't let go of this arm that I just latched onto. Nose to the neck, right shoulder down, roll over. And when we roll over, we still have that arm trapped, which means that now my right hand that's on the collar is going to let go and comb my hair. Right, I still imagine I have hair. Don't be mean to you guys. I comb my hair because I want to connect to this arm. Because this cat's going to immediately try to come up here and grab both hands, right? Trying to get strong on it. So instead, I'm going to grab my own collar. So now their hands never get to connect. And as long as his hands can't connect, we're going to choke. 
because there's nothing protecting the throat now. My left hand is going to snake under the neck. Thumb first. Thumb in the collar, connect. And now from here, guys, we're going to get on our right side. We're going to put our feet on the floor. We're going to extend our back. As we extend our back, we're going to hip in. We're going to pull that left elbow behind us. I'm doing it from this angle so you can see how much I want you to arch your back. Almost like you're going to give a big chest stretch. And we're going to pull that lapel behind the neck for the finish. All right. Let's work through it. Senior student, hop up. Junior student, lay down. I know we've gone a little bit over today, guys, but I had to show you some fancy shit for Saturday, okay? Now, leg drag still the same. Right hand on the hip, left hand on the pants, shuffle to the left. Punch that grip behind your right elbow, shuffle to the right. Nice. Now we're going to go right hand on the collar. We're going to go left hand to the hip grip. Remember, we're going really low on that hip grip. So we can lean to the right and pick up our partner's hips like we're going to force them into the turtle. So junior student, go ahead and turtle. Bring both hands out. Turtle up. If you have a gi dummy, just let them go to the turtle. Your left hand is going to go collar grip right behind the neck. Like you're got them where you can pull them up, show their face to the camera. And now we're going to bring our right knee to the hip bone. I slide my right knee right in front of their quad, right behind my partner's left elbow. Now, if you have a partner, you're going to need to finesse a little here. You've got to find it. You're going to dig that knee until you find right underneath their tricep. And now from there, you're going to start sliding that knee forward. Popping their elbow out. So their hand might still be under their face, but you can see an elbow. Take that left grip off and push that hand down. Cross our ankles. Pinch our knees. Go back to your collar grip. And now let's come up to our knees. Perfect. So that arm is pinched between your legs. Cross those ankles. You never give this arm back, okay, my friends? Now, your nose. It's going to go to their neck, your face, right in front of their shoulder. You're going to look towards their hair, put your right shoulder down, roll over that right shoulder. Front roll like Fundy's class. Pinch those knees, don't let go of that arm. Perfect. Now, your right hand is going to come up and grab your own lapel. Like a cross grip, trapping their arm against your ear and your right shoulder. Your legs are pinched, trapping their other hand with your legs. So just do some math, right? They're out of arms. We still have our left hand. My left hand is going to stake under the neck. It's going to grab the lapel right under the chin. And now we're going to get on our right side. Like we're going to face our partners back. From here, I put my feet down. I start to extend my back and I hit in while I pull that left elbow behind the neck. Finish. We'll hop up, run it again. All right, let's see. Junior student, oh, before I go. Senior students, you feel good with that? Questions? Oh, let's see, what's up, Josh? So when you get to that position, um, before you make the uh, the grip on the collar for the choke, and they, what if they start sliding out of the equation, what where you go to then? Right. I'm not to get away from what you're asking, but you could talk about after class if that's cool. I was just wondering. That's an that's a great <laughs> question for sure. Once they're trying to slide away, that cues some different attacks. I will show them after class. Absolutely. It, cool. it basically, it turns into that uh, reverse triangle, right? All right, guys, junior student, hop up. You're going to go now. We're going to go one for one on this, guys, to finish class. So junior student, hop up. You're going to drill with me. Ready. Right hand on the hip. Left hand pants grip. Shuffle to the left. Punch the grip behind your right elbow. Shuffle to the right. 
leg drag. Very nice. Now our right hand is gonna go collar grip. Nice and high by the chin. It's not a cross collar, it's the same side collar. My left hand is gonna come get a hip grip as low as we can on the pants, close to the floor. Lean to the right and lift that left hand. All the way until they turtle. Nice, senior student, go ahead and bring your hands out from underneath you, turtle up. All right, junior student, there's no room to get our foot in between their knee and elbow because they balled up on us. So we're gonna take our left hand and grab the collar right behind the neck. Nice, and I'm gonna use that to stand up, bring my right knee right to the ribs, in front of their right, in front of their quad, behind their elbow. Nice, okay. So now we're gonna start to slide our right knee underneath their tricep, underneath their elbow. We're gonna slide to our right hip. It's gonna expose that arm. It's gonna be laying on our inside thigh. We're gonna take our left leg over. Remember, if they're not quite where you need them, let go of the collar grip, grab their hand, push their arm between your legs, step over, cross your ankles, pinch our knees, go back to grabbing the collar. Now I'll switch to my knees, and we're ready to start attacking the roll. First, my face is gonna go towards their ear, my nose to their neck. I'm gonna look at their hairline, and I'm gonna roll over my right shoulder, pinching my knees, keeping that leg trapped in my, keeping their arm trapped in my legs. Now my right hand, like I was gonna comb my hair, but instead of my hair, it goes to my collar. My right hand has a cross collar grip. I trap their arm with my right ear and my right shoulder. Now my left hand is gonna snake under the neck and grab that cross collar grip. From here, I'm gonna face them, so I'll get on my right side. I'll even put my feet on the floor. Keep pinching those knees, but we're gonna start arching our back, extending our hips, stretching our partner out through their chest, pull that left elbow behind their head, finish for the choke. Whew. One of my favorite techniques, my friends. Let's see, does anyone have questions? I know, we jumped right, right into the deep water after a hard class. You guys are doing good. Nice work, Derek. All right, I you guys. Yes, I have a question. Oh, sorry, just to finish the choke at the end, instead of grabbing your own, can you, like, kind of back, like, or the back of their head, like, kind of like Oh, yeah, choke? you can go bow and arrow style. Go yeah. behind the head and slide that arm down the wrist. Totally fine. Absolutely. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, thumbs up if you're good, my friends. Let's go one for one, all right? So one for one, pass, turtle, attack the crucifix, roll into the choke. On three, ooh, you can't leave without a clap. On three, one, two. Let's get to work. One for one, it starts with the pass. Nice, leg drag. From the leg drag, we'll go hip grip. Start to force them into a turtle. They won't give us the hook, they, they ball up in the turtle. So we're gonna bring that collar grip behind the neck, bring our knee to their ribs. Nice. And now with our knee in the ribs, we're gonna start sliding that right leg underneath their elbow. Your hip can totally hit the floor, it's fine. They're not going anywhere. Once that arm's exposed, step over it with your left leg, crisscross our ankles and pinch our knees, let's go to our knees. And guys, there's lots of attacks from this, posi this position as well, but we're just gonna front roll here. Hide our face, roll over our right shoulder, pinch those knees, bring their arm with you. Nice, now your right hand's gonna, like you'd comb your hair, but instead go to your collar. Trap their arm on your right shoulder with your right ear. With their arm trapped, they got no more defense. Left hand snakes the neck. And choke city. I like getting on my side, hipping in, pulling the collar behind to finish. Nice work, my friends. We'll hop back up. Oh, we'll bottom the top if you have a partner. Bottom the top, we'll go one for one. If you got the dummy, keep going. 
Leg drag, very nice. From the leg drag, hip grip, expose the back. They decide to turtle rather than give up the hook. That's okay, We're, we can attack from here too. We'll get a collar grip behind the neck. We'll bring our knee to their ribs like we're gonna split the gap between their elbow and their knee. Yes, that allow us to start sliding our right leg underneath their arm, sliding into like a baseball slide. Once I have the arm trapped, I cross my ankles, pinch my knees and put them to the floor. Now it gives me the room to start rolling over that right shoulder. I tuck my hair, I look at their hairline so I can not hurt my neck as I front roll over. Nice. Bring that arm with you as you trap it between your legs. Now they have that other arm, so we're going to bring our right hand off their collar and grab our own collar just to keep them stretched out so they can't defend. Now my left hand can snake under the neck, grab the lapel. I like to get on my right side to finish this choke. Start extending in, extending my hips, pull the choke behind the neck, finish. Nice. Bottom to top or one for one. How you feel, Kevin and Ethan? You guys feel good? Perfect. Jesse, thumbs up if you're good, buddy. Awesome. Good pace, my friends. I got 120 seconds left, all right? So try to give me at least four more reps. That's two for you, two for your partner. I know, it's tiring. I'm huffing and puffing. It's that quarantine life. You feel me? You're going to be all right. We got to get out this sweat now, though. So when we're back on the mats, we'll be ready to go. Nice, Quan. Yes. Very nice leg drag. Expose the back. They turtle. This will allow us to start attacking the crucifix by sliding our elbow underneath their, or our knee underneath their elbow. Nice, Quan. Yes. Trap the arm. And now I got options, but we're just gonna front roll over that right shoulder. Hey, exposing, we're on the back guys. We're just using the arm entanglements to expose it. Yes. Trap their far arm with your ear and your shoulder. Their other arm is trapped with your legs. That leaves your left arm free for choke city. Nice work. One more rep. One more rep. Nice job. Leg drag, very nice. From the leg drag, we have a collar grip, we get a hip grip, and we start to pick up their hips. Our partner tries to turtle to run away from us taking their back. So instead, we bring our right knee to their ribs, we get a collar grip behind the neck with our left hand. And now we start sliding our right elbow underneath their arm, our right knee underneath their elbow. Pinch our knees, cross our ankles. Let's come back to our knees. Nice. Now we bring our chin to their neck. We look at their hairline so we don't hurt our neck as we roll over our right shoulder. Pinch those arms, pinch that leg, bring that arm with you, very nice. Right hand traps their arm by grabbing your own lapel. You trap their arm, their shoulder with your shoulder and your ear. Now my left hand is free. I grab the choke. I get on my side, hip in, catch a tap. Nice work, my friends. We'll fix our geese, thank our partners. Let's line up. Man, a lot of movement today, guys. So if you're sweaty today, a little more uh, huffy and puffy than you normally are, this is a good thing, right? Uh, I, I want to get tired from jiu-jitsu, man. Like, like we talked about to start class, uh, having this part of my day allows the rest of my day to feel so much easier to digest, right? Uh, something that I think is really important, okay? Like today, a class like today, we went through probably close to 30 different positions, right? Just a ton of different positions, long chains. If, if, if jiu-jitsu was a language, today you wrote paragraphs, right? You wrote a full-on paper today, big essay. The thing about that, guys, is the transition from going from that spot of like, I don't know what to do in jiu-jitsu to I want to write a book with my jiu-jitsu, so much of that transition, guys, is mental right? 
sometimes the hardest part of transitioning to like riding longer and longer chains with your jiu-jitsu is letting go of who you think you are, right? Like being comfortable with the idea that, yes, you didn't always know what to do, but now you kind of have an idea of what to do. Let yourself do it, right? I know that for me personally as a color belt, I had a long pause a lot of times before I would go through, like I, my plateaus were usually just moments of me trying to cling to where I was in the jiu-jitsu and not letting myself grow to where I was headed, right? Like I would, I don't know, man, it's not perfect, so I don't really want to go yet. My procrastination was really just another form of perfectionism, right? And if you've lived long enough or trained jiu-jitsu long enough, you know that the idea of perfect is a myth, okay? Like maybe your idea of perfect includes imperfection, then I'm down for it. But for most of us, this idea of like everything here has to be perfect for it to work is just a lie. And when I tell myself, don't go yet until I feel ready, that's me just holding on to that perfectionism, right? Like screw that stuff, man. Let that shit go. Let's just go, right? Let's just try it. If it doesn't work, then that rep was awesome because it's getting you closer to the reps that do work. Does that make sense, my friends? But in the, in the beginning, it can be kind of tough like that. I want to show professor I'm getting better. I want to show my partners I'm good. So we, we try to only do well. Uh, man, for my friends that like to draw or paint or the writers, rough drafts are just something that we're totally cool with being a part of the process. I'm asking that you let your jiu-jitsu be cool with having some rough drafts as well, right? Get some almost good reps. Couldn't is just an almost could, right? It's not that you can't, you can't yet. Allow yourself to be in that space, guys, and I promise your jiu-jitsu will continue to grow. All right, my friends? Sometimes it's just a matter of addressing how we're talking to ourselves in our own heads. Thank you guys for training. I appreciate you spending your Saturday. I appreciate you hanging out a little bit later today so we can get into one of my favorite techniques on the back. Please enjoy your weekend. If I don't see you tomorrow, I'll see you in Monday's classes. Okay, my friends? Thank you guys so much. We'll bow out. If you have any questions,